Welcome to 319 Event Center. I'm your host, Rachel Cahoon, and this is Show Me Chefs. Today in our third quarter round, we will have a special Lake of the Ozarks episode where both chefs will bring their lake style cooking to Springfield. Both chefs will be battling for a chance to move on to the next round and win that grand prize of $3,000. Now let's meet our chefs. I'm Joseph Cope from JJ's at the Copper Pod, located on the west side of Lake of the Ozarks in Lurie, Missouri. I got started cooking at a young age. Uh, my parents were both in the pizza business, played around in the kitchen, played around with food on plates, and it's really just love of playing with food and creating something new. I, I would say the inspiration behind the Copper Pot's cuisine uh, is kind of international. We're meat and potato country. Uh, our classics, uh, number one item is prime rib. Uh, number two is batter fried lobster, uh, which is kind of a lake classic, uh, hand breaded and fried. Uh, we, we strive to offer an upscale, casual atmosphere. We've been open since 2009, and I'm the head chef, the advertiser, meter, and greeter. And that's what we do here is a fun, fine dining atmosphere. My main goal as a chef uh, and really as a restaurant representative is to share new experiences. Um, so it, it's really about pushing myself and, uh, and trying to push others to experience something different because I'm constantly trying to learn. All the competition uh, that I'm gonna face uh, here right now, I'd, I'd say good luck and uh, salut. I'm Thomas Robinette. I'm the executive chef at Old Kinderhook in Camden, Missouri. I've been in the industry for about 18 years. I started in high school. I worked at a restaurant called JB Hooks. I worked there for 11 years. I started as the dishwasher and worked my way up to a sous chef, the executive chef, and eventually the general manager. So I researched culinary schools. I found an awesome program in Overland Park, Kansas, Johnson County Community College. I came in for the interview and I drove into Old Kinderhook and it was like, these gates opened up, we drove down the hill, there was a waterfall to the left, and just beautiful golf course. I was like, wow, this place really is special. Like, I want to be a part of this. So I, I took the job and I never looked back. There's the Trophy Room, which is a full service restaurant serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I'd say we're probably 95% scratch cooking, and it makes me proud of what I do. I can go home and you know feel good about the products that we put out here. So I have three daughters, Bailey, Madison, and Hayden. If I won Show Me Chefs, I would use the prize money to take my family back to Florida and probably go to Orlando and do SeaWorld and Disney World. If I had to tell my opponents, that it would just be good luck. So you guys ready to find out what your first challenge is? Let's go. Okay, so your first round is the lightning round challenge, where you will have 15 minutes to create the perfect dish using the mystery items. The loser of this round will have to cook with a penalty in the entree round. Penalty? Nobody told me about any penalty here, uh, so now I'm really kind of nervous. You ready, Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, unveil the ingredients. Your mystery ingredients are shark steaks from Express Foods and White River Brewing Company's Sea Street Pale Ale. I mean, is one of these for me? <laughs> you want one? You guys think you can handle that? I'm gonna have to. <laughs> when I seen the shark, I wasn't even sure it was shark at first. It looked like it could be tuna, shark, or some sort of salmon. All right, well, chefs, you will have 15 minutes to create the perfect dish using these mystery items. You will also have a pantry provided by Mama Jean's Natural Market, a spice rack provided by Down to Earth Foods, and bread provided by the Artisan Oven. Chefs, your time starts now. As soon as I seen the ingredients, I kind of knew what I wanted to do with the fish and then the sauce, and then it was like, well, what do I put with it? So I grabbed some rice wine vinegar and soy and doused it to try to, to build some flavor. So it was kind of looking through the pantry and finding things that would go well with it. 
15 minutes is just not quite enough time. Uh, I knew from the start, pale ale in the pan, we're gonna do some sort of poaching or reduced liquid sauce. And now it's time to meet our panel of judges. Our first returning judge is Diana Hicks, co-owner of Mama Jean's Natural Market. Our next returning judge and season one competitor is Wing Leong of Leong's Asian Diner. Thank you. And our final returning head judge is Angela Winathantri, executive chef and general manager here at 319 Event Center. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. Doing great. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So you guys are returning judges, all three of you. You know, how does it feel to be judging two other chefs? I feel lucky to be asked back yeah. again. It's really fun. <laughs> you yes. enjoy it? I do. So, judges, for somebody like myself who's never, you know, had shark steak, what does it taste like? How do you cook it? Well, like we were talking about uh, what uh, Chef Bianca was saying, um, it's, it's, there's a reason they call it shark steak. Uh, it's kind of a steak-like fish. It kind of cooks like a pork steak, like you said. Right, also. it's very meaty. It's, it's got an absorbing flavor that you put in there. It's not a flaky fish, more of a steak. Grainy, it's, yeah, uh, it's grainy. All right, well, let's see what these chefs can do with it. Okay, I'm excited. How you doing, Thomas? Doing good. Good. Um, I guess when I first saw the mystery ingredients, I thought to go Asian and maybe marinate it with soy and get some some flavor into it. And 15 minutes is not a lot of time. Everything changes as you go through and as you're tasting things, you don't taste the mystery ingredient, so you're constantly second guessing yourself. And that's another, you know, especially, I'm kind of curious when they see something like that, they have 15 minutes, what's going through their mind to come up with it? Uh, trying to get over the nerves, that's what I'm trying to do at this point. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, well, I have to see which chef is most comfortable with working with seafood. Yep. And have that background. Uh, Coming from the Lake of the Ozarks, it's not that much in seafood, but, but they, they do, they they do, do some they do fish. fish aspect of it, I believe. Aspect. What are you going to do with beer other than drink it? He yeah. He's only got two left. <laughs> he's already done oh, okay. drinking one. Let's go grab a beer at White River Brewing Company. Hi, I'm Buzz, and I'm the owner of White River Brewing Company. We chose the name White River Brewing. It gives us a a larger area of the Ozarks to be identified with. Uh, people in Arkansas think it's their river and we think it's our river. And Most of our names have something to do with the White River or its tributaries. I don't think there's another Table Rock Lake in the United States. Uh, I don't think there's any place that has gravel bar quite the way we do. And Those are our two most best-selling beer, Table Rock Red and Gravel Bar IPA. We make the most quality beers in town, hands down. Hops, grain, everything that we can get our hands on is of the most quality. We have a lot of fruit beers. We use actual fruit for these beers. It's not a flavoring of any form, it's just it's actual fruit that it sits on for weeks at a time and makes the best brews you will ever try. Check our website, we're updating that, and we'll have information both on our website and on our Facebook page about new beers that are coming out. The tap room is the best place to try them. It's a fun place to come and get a good quality craft beer. Pale ale beer, which for me is like, okay, we have beer, this should be easy. And then the shark loin. The shark a little bit smaller and different consistency as far as the texture of the meat than I've used to, been used to dealing with, with the shark that I get. So that was kind of a, what do I do? The cuts weren't really clean all the way, had some gristle and everything in there yet. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. So Tom is already ready, the, getting the uh, plates ready, and that's yep. a smart, smart move. Yeah, I remember uh, when I competed, I didn't have the plates until the last minute, and it was like almost too late. Too late to uh, yeah. plate, even though you had everything yeah. made, yeah. you just couldn't get that plate, you know, everything plated. And I'm kind of curious, a pale ale, how they're going to use, is, are they going to make a sauce out of it? Are they going to marinate it with it? I'm kind of curious how, uh, how the chef's going to use the pale ale with the shark. Trying to infuse the beer into it by cooking with it. You know, just making the sauce, at first it was too sweet, and then it was too salty, and then I couldn't taste the beer, so just adjusting as you go is kind of nerve-wracking in the, the time restraints. Oh, I couldn't stop shaking it all throughout the whole round. I mean, I'm running around like crazy. The biggest thing I learned, I mean, you can sit at home and say, oh, I could be on Chopped and do just fine. You know, it's whatever, I could do that. No, really, it's as seen on TV, it's hard. And I mean, 15 minutes, I mean, was a total kind of surprise. 
Five minutes left to go, chefs. Five minutes, okay. So, Thomas, you were a little nervous earlier, but, you know, you have almost five minutes. You got a lot of time, don't you think? It's easy to say <laughs> that from over there. Well, it looks like he's on a mission. He knows yep. what he's going to do, and uh, he's going to town on it. I think it's the last five minutes felt okay. I felt like I was where I needed to be, but still lost with finding the finishing parts of the dish. It was hard enough to get it all together. Went for a vinaigrette kind of salad type deal with some capers and lemon juice, uh, lime juice, some uh, mixed greens, some jalapeno for spice, uh, trying to break up that beer mellowness. Chefs, you have three minutes left. We need to start looking at plating. Shark steaks, just like any protein, it's just as important to let it rest too. Yeah, right, not yeah. just cut it. That's yeah. awesome to do, yeah. Let it rest and get the juices get just the like juices. a steak. But we're in a little bit of a crunch, crunch when you're under time. time. You know, quick fire round, yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. And I think I overcooked it maybe just a little bit at the end, uh, and that kind of hurt. Most chefs, uh, you can see how special they are. They're all layering flavors. Yep. And yeah, that's just very important to get that taste. Coming up on a minute, chefs. Thank you. Unfortunately, really didn't get everything executed onto the plate and presented really the way I wanted to. <laughs> 30 seconds left, chefs. My God, come on now, let's get plates going. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Chefs, your time is up. That is hard. That is hard. Okay, chefs, you had 15 minutes to create the perfect dish using shark steaks from Express Foods and White River Brewing Company C Street Pale Ale. It's now time to present your dish to the judges. Chef Joseph, you'll present first. I tried to do a uh, beer braised shark steak uh, with a little acidic uh, microgreen salad. Uh, so there's a little bit of spice and acid in there. The shark is medium rare. Honestly, not happy with what I ended up with. Hope to uh, see the next round and learn from this and learn from time and move on from there. Your salad's awesome. Thank you. When I started that. Your shark steak, what you prepared, is good, but they still have that little bitterness of the tail. I don't think you cut it enough. Was there any other seasoning on the shark other than the beer? A uh, little bit of garam marsala. Garam uh, I can taste the flavor. A little chipotle also. Chipotle. I think you could have used a little bit more seasoning, seasoning, a little mm -hmm. salt or pepper mm -hmm. at the end. That beer kind of washes some of the seasoning away, but uh, the, the shark is cooked good. I think you're right. If it's just a little more seasoning, uh -huh. it would have yeah. been spot the on. The addition would have been when you saw the stuck shark steak, a little bit of salt and pepper. While you're thinking, you should have, it could have gone a long way. Thank you, Chef yeah. Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. It's Thanks. very good. Chef Thomas, it's now time for you to present your dish to the judges. Okay, so it's a, a salad with red leaf and the, the bib with a couple of orange supremes. The red and yellow peppers are sauteed, and then I did a quick marinade with some soy and some rice wine vinegar, and then seared it off, tried to get a, a nice char on it, finished it in the oven, and then reduced the pan juices with a little more of the IPA, and finished it with some butter, and just put that right over the fish. I think the shark, the shark is cooked perfect. It's just breaks in your mouth, uh, my, at least mine. Mine's a little bit on the done side, but... It's... Is it really? Yeah. Now, once again, like Chef Leon and I were talking about, need a little bit of more seasoning on this shark, I think. It's... I agree, same thing. I was afraid with the, the soy getting it too salty. The sauce, when I first had it, it was really salty, and I was really nervous that it was gonna... When you're marinating with beer, it kind of washes it out, and yeah. trying to get that beer to get that, that flavor. To me, I just need a little bit of salt and pepper. While you guys are thinking what you guys are doing, you should have just done that, and that would have just kind of cut certain things, certain bitterness out. Diana, what did you think of the dish overall? Um, well, I thought it was a beautiful presentation. Um, I, I really liked the vegetables. It seemed like my shark was a little bit overdone, maybe. Thank you, Chef Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, chefs, it's now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen.
Let's talk about Joseph's dish real quick. He was still trying to finish his dish while the time was... Time got away from him. Yeah, time got away from him, and I know how that is. Yeah. Overall, the, the vinegar, uh, his vinaigrette was a little bit too much vinegar. I think uh, Chef Joseph was trying to do too much. The fish was cooked better. Yeah, I in, liked uh, his fish, Thomas. the texture. Right. Yeah, with Chef Thomas. Uh, my fish was done almost perfectly. I kind of got lucky. Right. I know you guys... You, you got the thicker piece, yeah, and there was in the middle. The end, end pieces that yeah. was too done. It's a tough decision on this one because they are, you know, there were several positive points and there's quite a bit of negative points on both dishes. But both of them were, uh, they both finished. They both have very similar takes of the presentation of the appetizer. Yeah. As far as the taste and the flavor and everything, they were, they were pretty evenly matched. So judges, do we have a winner for the lightning round? I believe so. Okay, let's bring our chefs back in. Good. Stay tuned for more Show Me Chefs. Welcome back to the Kitchen Chefs. It's now time to pick a winner for the lightning round. Judge Angelo, do we have a winner? It's a tough decision, but the winner is Chef Tom. Congratulations, Chef Thomas. You are the winner of the lightning round. Unfortunately, Chef Joseph, you will have to cook with a penalty in the entree round. You may return to your stations. Okay, chefs, the next round is the entree round. We will have 35 minutes to complete your dish using the mystery ingredients in your baskets. Losing round one, that has its own challenges if you're already 10 points behind. But now I've got a penalty. I don't, you know, is it time against the clock? Is it uh, something stolen away from me or is it something added? Your mystery ingredients are a whole squid from Express Foods, coconut rye porter from White River Brewing Company, float trip jalapeno pickles, and watercress from New Horizon Veggies. It's uh, one of those dreams where you open up the basket and there you find a whole squid. You guys like the squid? Not really. <laughs> Honestly, not really. Have you worked with squid before, Thomas? No, not in this form. Nope, me neither. Just when I first seen this squid, I was a little nervous because I had never um, cleaned one or dealt one that was fresh and whole. Chef Joseph, are you ready to find out what your penalty is? I was wondering if I was going to find out midway through. <laughs> well, Chef Joseph, you will have a penalty of an extra mystery ingredient in your basket during this round. But you cannot find out what that is just yet. Okay. <laughs> you ready for that? Bring it on, All bring right. it on. Okay, okay chef. That's, that's gonna be interesting. Yes, yes, this is gonna be interesting. Your time starts now. From the beginning, knowing that there's a penalty in there somewhere, kind of went with a Thai version, soaking the calamari in a little bit of the coconut rye, uh, adding a little bit of coconut milk, green curry paste. My reaction to the squid was almost fear because I've never handled the a whole one, and at first I thought that it was cleaned or viscerated, and I tried to start chopping it up and soon realized that it had not been cleaned yet. So that was a, a pretty big surprise. Squid? Are you kidding me? The whole squid? What am I supposed to do with that? I mean, I've cooked calamari before, not in that form. Unfortunately, not too many chefs have worked with the whole squid before. Everything's all processed and cut up and cleaned for you. Uh, here's the whole animal, right. and you gotta know how to clean it, how to, how to prepare how to it. Cut it, how, how to, which way to cut it. It's got a plastic membrane in the middle uh, on the tentacles. Uh, the, you gotta watch for the beak, the beak. Well, I'm listening into the judges making sure I'm cutting out the beak and this piece and the other. I felt like I did a pretty good job of uh, breaking it down and really cleaning it up. I worked with squid all you know, the first 10 years of my career. They never had it all cleaned and and, and finish for you. So we always had to learn how to cut the whole squid. And that's uh, hopefully an art that's not lost on uh, chefs uh, these days. The secret is cooking it just right. Because you could overcook it, it's rubber bands. So the other ingredients we have is... Uh, the beer. The, the beer, the coconut uh, rye, and we got uh, 50 pickles, I believe. Right. I'm curious what that coconut uh, beer tastes like and wow. how, how much coconut flavor in there, but coconut pairs really well with seafood. I think so. it does. And watercress, yeah. great vegetable, I love it. Uh, my dad used to pick it fresh from the river and we used to just lightly season it and salt it up and 
and that'd be like almost like spinach. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the pickles, we'll have to see how that comes yeah. to play to, uh, to incorporate that into the dish. Let's go visit Catherine at Float Trip Pickles. Hey guys, I'm Catherine. Well, you usually come to a law office when you're in a pickle, but at this law office, you can get pickles. Let's go check it out. Hey, we're here with Greg Pierman. He's one of the owners of Float Trip Pickles. So this is not your only job, right? Correct. A regular job, I'm an attorney. And uh, this became a hobby job of ours. So it started on a float trip. Can you tell me about that? Well, in 1992, my partner Jerry and his brother took their dad on the first float trip. And we came up with this recipe a couple years after that. We have three things. So we have the float trip pickles, the pickles and jalapenos. We have a pickle and jalapeno relish. And we have just a sweet and spicy jalapeno. OK, so what are we going to try here? All right, these are the uh, regular float trip pickles. Okay. So the pickles and jalapenos combined. Oh, I didn't realize they were like actually jalapeno. Alright, so, Mmm. It. It's so good. It's so much sweeter than I expected it to be. A little sweet and you get a little heat on that end. Mm hmm I'm getting that now. <laughs> it's a That's so good. <laughs> delayed heat. Is that intentional? Uh, it isn't, but it's kind of a signature of our product. We call it a walk away heat. So what do you expect the chefs to do with them on the show? Anything that's going to need a little bit of kick or a little extra flavor, they're going to be great for that. And uh, so it kind of depends on what they're going to pair it with. So why did you want to be a part of Show Me Chefs? It's just a great idea for us to get some exposure and to get our product out there. And the chefs, they're going to use some creativity, so it's neat to see what they're going to do. Except Tom, were you expecting, I mean, were you surprised when you uh, found out you were the winner? I honestly thought it could have went 50-50, so. Chef Joseph, what, without giving you a whole idea, what, what kind of a flavor profile are you thinking of going with the squid? I'm gonna do um, like a, a green curry coconut uh, marinated squid and then a little bit of quinoa as a base, um, including uh, almost kind of a- Are you watching me over there? <laughs> a uh, pickle relish kind of uh, sauce, kind of almost like a tzatziki playing off that. Okay, awesome. So, Chef Thomas, uh, I know you were a little nervous beginning of the competition. Have you uh, have your nerves calmed down? A little bit. This basket's throwing me for more of a loop. Uh huh. So. <laughs> I agree with you. Let's do some mushroom. Yeah, let's do some mushroom. That'll be different. Competition's always uh, always an interesting thing for the psyche to go through. Win or lose, who knows? We'll see. Uh, but I'm going into the ring, all gloves on, fighting like a beast. I'm so ready for my mystery ingredient. <laughs> are you thinking about that right now? Oh, I'm trying to think, you know, how are we going to include this at, you know, at the kind of finish point. I'm sure it's going to be about 10 minutes left. It's not going to be an, uh, another random ingredient I've never used, I hope. As a professional chef, you always come up with something you've never used. You taste it, you, you go, well, it's a protein, it's this and that. Cook it correctly. You know, and flavor it with the seasonings that you are familiar with, and that's what you go with. So this round was a lot more difficult. The, the first round, I kind of had an idea and went with it. This one, I kind of had ideas for components, and everything kind of tasted different than I thought it would, so I was struggling the whole round to make it all make sense or taste good together. It was a constant battle to figure out what the hell I was going to do. Made a little bit of a quinoa mash with asparagus, mushroom, added the watercress in there for a little herbal spice note, uh, and then that darn penalty shot. Chef Joseph, are you ready for your you extra mystery Give it to me quick, I only got so many minutes. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It is oh. Buckingham's barbecue sauce provided by MDR. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, you think you can handle that? I don't know. <laughs> barbecue sauce. 15 minutes left, barbecue sauce. I've got pickles going for a tzatziki pickle thing, and you throw me barbecue sauce. Threw me for a loop, but we're gonna change it, we're gonna change it. I guess when he did get his mystery ingredient, it was really late. He said he was going with curry, which I did too, so curry and barbecue would have been maybe a quick fix. I'm glad it wasn't me getting one with you know, at the time that he got it was, I think, 10 minutes when the round was almost over, so having to integrate it so short in a round would have been pretty frustrating. I was hoping he'd get something terrible. <laughs> barbecue, 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 barbecue. It's kind of a neat idea having that little barbecue sauce awesome. thrown in at Chef Joseph. I know. I know, we're going curry and we're going uh, to Kansas City now for barbecue saucer. 
I guess this is located in Springfield. Korean barbecue sounds good. A talented chef like you, uh, you can figure it oh, out. Oh yeah, no, we're barbecue. gonna be good. Uh, so just uh, flipped me on, flipped me on my head, threw out the tzatziki sauce idea, went for the barbecue sauce ideas. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. Got the oil on so I could start frying, made a little flour mixture, dusted the calamari strips in there, uh, ran out of time the f first round, so wanted to make sure they were cooked. I'm not sweating because I'm running, it's hot with the lights. Chef Joseph, uh, where did you, where's your culinary background? Did you go through, is it through experience working through restaurants or did you go to a culinary school? Experience through working uh, at restaurants. Traveled a lot, uh, more uh, when I was younger than I do now. Chef Thomas. Where did you learn how your culinary students all how? I went to the Culinary Academy in Overland Park, Kansas. Okay. It's an ACF apprenticeship program. Being a chef from the School of Hard Knocks, there's a saying, beware of a chef that grew up cooking with grandma and mom. She helped. Yeah. And a lot of times, a lot of chefs, you know, get their inspiration from family, especially mom. Right. Especially mom. Oh yeah, she let me play with my food. I'd build forts and, uh, with carrot sticks and asparagus. and. <laughs> so for the entree course, I, I took the squid and made rings out of the, uh, the body and then just took the ten tentacles and dredged them in seasoned flour and flash fried them for a minute. I made a curry spiced couscous with a yogurt sauce that had a little bit of the pickling liquid from the pickles. One minute left. I'm a little nervous for Chef Joseph. I know he has a lot of things going on and he's, I don't know why he did that. My squid was a little overdone, but I wanted to make sure it was done. So I probably cooked it too soon. I'm sure no one wants my sweat in their food. I know that presentation is important on their, their scorecard, so I want to make sure that I give myself time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Nice work, Thomas. Thank you. Show Me Chefs will be right back after this break. Chefs, in this round, you are asked to complete the perfect dish using all of the mystery ingredients in your baskets. It's now time to present your dish to the judges. Chef Thomas, you will present first. Okay, the, the calamari, there should be a couple tentacles and a few rings. I just sliced it, made a seasoned flour, tried to lightly fry it so it didn't get too chewy. There's a couscous on the bottom. The sauce was reduced with coconut milk, a little bit of sugar. The carrots are just cooked down with a little bit of the, the pickling juice from the pickles. And then the watercress, I just flash fried, hit it with a little salt. And the bottom is a, a yogurt sauce with a little bit of lime, some of the juice from the, the pickling liquid as well. This is couscous or quinoa? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you. That. Quinoa. Quinoa. That's Did right. I say couscous? Actually, it's a pretty good job, I think. Calamari tinder. Cooked just right. Calamari is really done right. It's not chewy. I don't think the quinoa is quite cooked. That's what I was going to ask you. It is not all the way cooked. But the flavor. The flavor is there, but I love all the aspects of it. I love the radish, the carrot, the pickles. Really, uh, the yogurt sauce really complements everything. You have a melody of flavors and textures. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. Thank you, Chef Thomas. Thank you. Chef Joseph, you may now present your dish to the judges. So again, we're playing quinoa against quinoa. Started with uh, the sauce idea of like a pickle uh, kind of tzatziki thing. Uh, got the mystery ingredient of the barbecue sauce, which is kind of hard to change the flavor profile behind that. Uh, added a little bit of the uh, coconut beer to that also to uh, tone down the tanginess of it. There's mushroom, asparagus, and the quinoa, light fried calamari. Hopefully it's tender. No. <laughs> We're done. This is hard. I think the calamari is just a tad bit, but I know it's a tough, tough situation to time it just perfectly. I wanted to make sure I got everything on the plate this time, and the quinoa cooked more really done. Good. You know, like what's being incorporated, a little asparagus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the watercress is into the green, hopefully to give it a little uh, herbal bite. I think you did a good job with what you had to work with. And the you were going one direction, then you had Totally to... opposite direction, yes. Um, I would have gone just a little bit more with the, the coconut. To tone it down to even more. To tone it down. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's really fighting for the other components on your dish, but uh, that or you could probably use a lesser amount of it, you know. And that's where I put it on the side, on the side. so that you and could that just you pull in the quinoa if you wanted to or, or not. Thank you, Chef Joseph. Yes, thank you. 
Okay, chefs, it's now time for the judges to deliberate your dishes. You may now exit the kitchen. So, Chef Wayne, I'm gonna come to you first. What do you think about Chef Thomas' dish? I think it was well composed. I like all the different textures. And the two different sauces kind of complemented everything. Calamari was cooked just right. Yeah. Quinoa, yeah, undercooked. But, but the uh, flavor was delicious. The flavor was good. I'm gonna ask you about Chef Joseph. And I saw you, the calamari was a little tough on yeah. that. I didn't care for his calamari. Um, his quinoa was cooked to perfection. Yep. I liked his use of the pickles. Yep. Um, that was very good. As far as the flavor profile, I feel like Chef Thomas was right on with that. Um, I wasn't as pleased with the flavor on Chef Joseph, but I did give him a bonus point because of the uh, yeah, barbecue so sauce throw in. Yeah. And it was a tough situation. I mean, really, when I tasted it, it was tough to judge because they're almost kind of equal in that a lot of things they did. All right, judges, are you ready for the dessert round then? Yes, yeah. we are. All right, let's bring the chefs back in. Okay, chefs, it is the final round for you guys. How are you feeling? It's the final round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, chefs, you will have 25 minutes to create a dessert in this round. Going into round three, I've got my appetizer round that I didn't really excel at to think about. Uh, entree, I made up a little bit of ground. Well-cooked quinoa, I like that. But round three, I really gotta make a show. You will have to use all of the ingredients in your mystery baskets. Desserts are definitely not my strong point, so this this last one is probably my weakest section of the competition, so I'm super nervous. I hope I can finish strong and take this thing home. Okay, chefs, your ingredients are Midtown Apricot Hefe from White River Brewing Company, pineapple, Cheddar flavored quinoa chips and cranberry chipotle cheddar cheese, all provided by Mama Jean's Natural Market. You ready for the last round? Let's go. Your 25 minutes begins now. Yeah, and the ingredients for the dessert round were really tough. Again, it was just like the second round where I'd seen the basket ingredients and I was like, what am I going to do? It took me a long time to figure it out. So let's go on a walk through round three. Round two. Totally blew my mind, we got squid. So nothing holding back on round three. Uh, basket ingredients, pineapple, okay. Uh, quinoa chips, basically flavorless, uh, exciting. Hefeweizen apricot beer, and uh, cranberry chipotle cheddar cheese. Quite a mixed bag there. Coming from you know, being a you know, savory chef background, strike you know, the word that strikes terror in all savory chefs is make a dessert, you know? And uh, that's, to me, that was one of my weakest leaks and I'm always learning. And um, when I competed, it made me and then it broke me. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Thomas, uh, dessert-wise, what do you guys offer at, at uh, in your restaurant? Um, right now on the menu we have a, it's called Tom's Favorite Cereal Milk Ice Cream. It's inspired by a, a restaurant in New York where they make ice cream out of cornflakes. My favorite ice cream was uh, Cement Toast Crunch. So we soak the milk and cream in it and then strain it and make ice cream base out of it. Oh, well, Chef Thomas, do you have a pastry chef at your place? or you the kind We of do, we do. So shout out to Taylor. I need you right now. Went and got chocolate chips, uh, looking at making a chocolate sauce mousse type of deal. Chef Joseph, how many uh, dessert items is in your menu? Over time, we've uh, we've changed it up a handful of times. Uh, now we're to a uh, narrow list of four. Uh, just you know, four good desserts. Keep them moving out. Uh, a molten chocolate cake, kind of classic uh, fried bread pudding over ice cream with a rum sauce, cheesecake. But I don't have time for that today. This is going to be interesting with the chipotle yep. cheese. Cranberry chipotle, so it's gonna be sweetie, sweet, but a little spicy, whatever they want to do. Let's ride along with Catherine to meet Cher, owner of our spice sponsor, Down to Earth Foods. Hey, it's Catherine. Today we're heading to Stratford. We're gonna talk to Cher with Down to Earth Foods. She provided the spice pantry for the show. We're here at Down to Earth. This is Cher. She's the owner and founder, right? Yep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so can you tell me kind of the story of how this kind of got started? Well, we started a little store in town and we started getting in whole grains, rice and beans. What's the most common one that people buy? 
Um, our most popular beans are black beans, uh, pintos, and brown lentils. Yeah. And spices as well, that became one of our most popular items. So why is it important that you spice it up? To make the meal appetizing. Oh, okay. You always want something that tastes nice quickly. And so people, it's important that people learn how to work with spices. Oh. It's good to grow them in your garden, but there's so many dried varieties available now. So On Show Me Chefs, what are you most excited about? I love watching what the chefs get to do with the ingredients and some of them are so professional about it and others you can just see the wheels going there as well. <laughs> so it's been fun to be part of the show and just watch the creativity and also watch people grow. The people who've gone on from one, you know, uh, one round to the next, they, they really start getting into it. So I just think it's a great opportunity to do Show Me Chefs. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's been a treat to watch these two chefs from the lake of the Ozarks uh, well, competing against each other. Well, it's great to see that caliber of talent here in Missouri. Yeah, every week I get surprised by how good these chefs are. Um, before the first episode started, I was really nervous. There was kind of, Joseph is a chef from our area, so there was kind of that pressure there that if I lost, it's, you know, kind of like the local bragging rights, so that kind of made it a little more nerve-wracking to win. It seems the aura of the chefs are much more calm right now. Yeah. They're not panicky. I think they have a, an idea what they're gonna do. And uh, they're they're, gonna do I bet they're panicking on the inside. You think? Personal pride and uh, goals kind of motivate me. So Thomas is pretty hard competition. I know that uh, he's nearby, so I'm not positive in winning or losing. I was nervous about losing and, and going back to work and back to home and getting the hazing from everyone in the kitchen about losing to uh, one of our competitors in the neighborhood. Chefs, you have 15 minutes left. So now I'm building the idea from the beginning. I've already grabbed the, the cups. Uh, so I'm gonna make some sort of layered trifle type kind of thing. Uh, the quinoa chips, you can use them like breadcrumbs or whatever. So uh, kind of thought maybe some sort of brittle deal taking the pineapple, slicing it, uh, making it part of the sauce with the Hefeweizen beer, a little bit of honey in there and brown sugar uh, to reduce with the pineapple. Added a little bit of mascarpone to everything. I felt more prepared with the time and the planning, but the, the dessert aspect of it was very scary, not being comfortable making many desserts. I'm taking one from you, Wing. I'm just hoping I don't cook it too long. Yeah. <laughs> waiting for uh, my chocolate to uh, melt, and then I add cool cream. Pretty interesting over there. It looks yeah, like he's got like a crepe or something. The cheese was probably the hardest part for me. I don't think I even transformed it. I think I shredded it and threw it in the middle of a crepe and baked it for a minute just to melt it. So uh, coming onto the show is kind of exciting. I mean, I grew up watching all the Food Network shows, so uh, it's kind of surreal to be able to be in a competition like this. Chefs, you have 10 minutes left. So I grab the raspberries and the blueberries, start out my plate, and I got a head start on that. Looks like Chef Joseph do some type of parfait. Be uh, willing to uh, compete in an all-star season? I'd love to. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fun. In fact, Chef Aaron you talks to me all the time. He says, we're ready for a rematch. Okay. Well, seems like that's something that we can arrange. I'd like to win to make my kids, peers, and you know all the mentors over the years proud. I made a crepe with the chips, a little bit of the beer, made a sauce with the pineapple and beer, reduced it down, and then just sauteed some pineapple chunks and a simple syrup. I, I kind of failed on my initial mousse kind of ganache idea there. Still trying to compete, taking the chipotle cheddar, adding that into the chocolate actually, a uh, little bit of peanut butter. So both chefs are plating while they're cooking. All right. And I'm hoping the timing will come just right, but it's gonna be a tough little task to get everything on the plate, especially on this dessert round. Well, Chef Joseph looks like he's putting a, a chuck of mousse or a ganache in there. It's a mix between all said things. <laughs> This is what you get when you're not classically trained. And I said, Thomas is trying to make a mousse, I mean, a, a whipped topping, I believe. Come on. Chefs, don't forget, there is $3,000 on the line. Is he changing his mind? 
Yeah. yeah. No, I'll just change the plating, I think. Just pl change the plate color. Grilled the pineapple slices just to add a little bit more texture and presentation on top. And then that brittle with the quinoa, chocolate chips. Got a little overdone on the edges and didn't set up quite the way I was hoping. Uh, but with so much time, I mean, you only have one opportunity to do it right. I think Chef Joseph trying to layer in different flavors, different textures. And to me, that's what makes a great dessert. 30 seconds left, chefs. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Chefs, your time is up. Oh, wow. Well, wow. Good job, chef. Very good. After this break, Show Me Chefs will return. Okay, chefs, for your final round, you are asked to create the perfect dessert in 25 minutes using all of the ingredients in your mystery baskets. It's now time to present your final dish to the judges. Chef Joseph, you will present first. Well, you have a kind of uh, chocolate trifle, many layers of flavor in there. You dig down deep for the blueberry blackberry. I think that'll kind of play in well. Uh, we took the pineapple, diced it, made it into a sauce with the beer uh, that was layered on top with just a little touch of thyme, mixed between chocolate mousse ganache, and uh, then the texture profile with the brittle is a mixture of chocolate, the quinoa chips, and mascarpone. It tastes a chipotle too. Mm -hmm. I do taste a chipotle. I love the, mm -hmm. the pineapples on top. They're yeah, a good flavor. Unfortunately, your chocolate mousse is very oily. Uh, a, a mousse is usually it's a meringue with chocolate added to it and egg yolks, and it should be light and fluffy. If you had that much chocolate and let us taste everything, the chocolate is overpowering everything else. I Great think it. Job. I think it tastes delicious, and I love the spice. Yep. That it has that that nice is in there, that little though, kick. Huh? Chef Joseph, before you go, like I said earlier, there's $3,000 on the line. What would you do with that? $3,000 is uh, typically what I save up uh, to take my yearly trip in January when we close the restaurant. Uh, so this next year, I'm looking at maybe uh, South Africa or New Zealand. So uh, that would definitely uh, uh, put me way ahead in uh, more fine dining and food uh, opportunities. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chef Thomas, it's now your turn to present your dish to the judges. I don't have very many dessert recipes embedded in my head, but the crepe batter was something easy, easy to come up with and do, so I figured if I made it a little thicker, it might mimic uh, a cake with the crepe batter. So I took some of the, uh, the cheddar quinoa chips and actually blended them up in the, the cake batter and then folded it together with some of the, the cranberry chipotle cheese in the middle with some of the crunchies and then made a quick whipped cream, took the pineapples, cooked them down with the beer. There's one in the center that's just cooked in beer and then the ones on the side are cooked with caramel and then the strawberries with a little bit of orange juice macerated instead of lemons because I thought the orange would go better with the, the pineapple. That's a very clean plate. Soup of ice cream mm -hmm. would have completed this dish. I like that uh, you can taste every individual component of your dessert. As far as the strawberries, yeah, you can also macerate it with a little uh, orange zest or something to give it a little bit more to it, uh, but uh, overall, I like the dish. Chef Thomas, before you go, what would you do with the $3,000? Take the family on a vacation to Florida. We've got some family down there, and uh, it's been calling our name for a while, so. All right, well, thank you so much, Chef Thomas. Okay, chefs, it's time for the judges to deliberate your final dish. You may now exit the kitchen. I think uh, Chef Thomas went with, with, you know, a little bit safer, but I liked how every component of his was able to taste, you can taste the crunch of the, the crumble, you can taste, you know, the whip topping and everything else, where uh, Chef Joseph was all kind of blended together once he stirred it up. And also, it's very important, like when he was calling, you know, he was saying a mousse. Right. It was, there was no cream aspect of it at mm -hmm. all. Right. Even with him, some kind of a, it was a hot dish, but if he got some ice cream and just put it on top, let it just drip down, right. it would have been completely transformed that dish. So judges, do we have a winner for today's quarter round episode? Yeah, I think we do. Okay, let's bring in the chefs. Show Me Chefs will be right back after this break. Welcome back to the Kitchen Chefs. After three intense rounds of cooking, it's time to pick a winner for today's episode. Judge Diana, can you tell us a little bit about Chef Joseph dishes? 
Yes, on the appetizer round, the shark I thought was done to perfection except it lacked a little bit in seasoning and a, a little bit in the presentation. The uh, entree meal, the quinoa was really, really good and it was done to perfection, but the uh, calamari was a little bit overdone. The dessert round, I love chocolate. I thought it was very good, uh, even though it seemed like you got a little bit rushed. I thought the overall flavor uh, was great and maybe lacked a little bit in presentation, but um, I thought overall you did a great job. And Judge Wing, can you tell us a little bit about Chef Thomas's dishes? Well, uh, Chef Thomas did a great job on presentation. Uh, your first round, your appetizer, shark was a little bit overdone. Your entree round, the calamari was cooked per to perfection. Uh, the quinoa was a little underdone. And finally, the dessert round, nice presentation. i uh, just like to see it punched up more in flavor. But overall, great job. So by saying all that, tonight's winner on the quarter round is Chef Thomas. Congratulations, buddy. Well, from the beginning, I said I'd be a winner. So uh, I really do feel like I won on a handful of different things, not necessarily the plates or the food itself. Uh, if I had it to do again, I mean, there'd be a hundred things I would do differently, but that's the fun of this competition. You get one try, give it your best, and uh, fight again. Congratulations, Chef Thomas. You're the winner of today's episode. How do you feel? Pretty good. Now I'm a, a little more, after finding out the decision, I'm a little more nervous, but I was very elated to find out that I won and I was advancing. That's all the time we have today. I'm your host, Rachel Cahoon, here at 319 Event Center. Tune in next time for our final quarter round, where we will have Tommy Kelly from the Branson Convention Center battling it out with Brian Isaacs from Hy-Vee Market Grill. Oh.